when our group met her at the mill, I wasn't there at all. Her boyfriend walked on ahead of her. She came out looking completely shocked, uh, but she got a pamphlet into her hands and she pointed at the business card uh, and said, this number, call this number, we can help you. And that evening, that's my cell phone number, I get a text saying, what can you do to help a scared pregnant mother who has an unplanned pregnancy? And um, a few days later, we were able to meet with this scared young woman uh, at a coffee shop. We went to the local um, pregnancy resource center with her afterwards. And by the end of that day of a few hours, she and her boyfriend went from considering their options to beaming smiles on their faces, talking about their baby that they were gonna have together. And it was, it was really beautiful. So fast forward several months and um, this young mom, she's 20, she asked me to be her doula. And I was thrilled about that. And so it was just this last weekend, Saturday night, it was the end of a um, community-wide prayer meeting we had. I noticed on my phone a missed call from this girl. And so I call her straight back and she says, hey, I'm on my way to this hospital. Um, can you come? I said, yes, I'm on my way now. So I rushed to the hospital and it uh, turns out it's not even the hospital that we were intending to go at. Um, but I arrived there and we're in triage and one of the nurses says, oh, we're going to get Looney to come in and do the ultrasound. Well, Kimberly Looney is the name of the abortionist at the mill where we do ministry. And so I immediately pick up on that and I'm like, wait, we're not at that, we're, oh. And then a few minutes later, Kimberly Looney, Dr. Kimberly Looney, opens the curtain. The first thing she sees is me. She jumps. She jumps when she sees me because week after week after week, I've been calling out to her or I've stood beside someone who's called out to her. So she knew who I was as soon as she walked into that room. I, I double checked her name tag just to be sure. There it said Kimberly Looney and I said, what in the world is happening here? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So she, she leaves after doing the ultrasound just to make sure the baby was all right. I texted one of my friends who's out on the sidewalk with me a lot and I said, Looney is her doctor, get people to pray. And so immediately the whole team at home, they were setting up a, a night long prayer vigil. Some people were staying up all night to pray for the fact that Kimberly Looney was there and we might have an opportunity to talk to her. So this whole night long, they've been praying. Um, that's been in the back of my mind. Kimberly Looney's gonna come back into this room and deliver this baby. And so the time comes and Looney walks in the room she is there to deliver the baby that seven and a half months ago, she would have been just fine with killing. And what happens instead is it was a difficult delivery. There were complications and I got to watch just mere inches away from this doctor, the so-called doctor that I've been calling out to for a year. I watched her fight for the life of a baby that she would have killed a few months ago. And when the baby was born, it took a little while for this baby girl um, to start crying and I just remember one of the few moments where I could take my attention off of the mother and look down at, with the, at Dr. Looney. She was holding this baby that was a little bit ashen, a little bit blue, a little bit limp, but then the baby cried and there was just the big sigh of relief throughout the room and Kimberly Looney looked relieved for this baby to be crying in her hands and they hand them off to the nurses and the baby was fine. Mom did so well. But we've been at the mill um, three times in this last week and we haven't seen her at Planned Parenthood. And we haven't known her to skip a week. We haven't gone a week without seeing her there at Planned Parenthood since she had maternity leave months and months ago.